Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First of all, praise to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for His countless shower of blessings. Lecturer of Environmental Law in UITM, Madam Nurul Huda Adibah binti Mustafa, and my fellow classmates. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good evening. My name is Muhammad Faiz Fakrullah bin Zulmani. I'm representing Group 6 and will be presenting about a case study relating to the current issues of water pollution reported by the Department of Environment in year 2019. The two water issues that are selected in this case study are including um, pollution in Sungai Ichat and pollution in Sungai Kim Kim. This presentation consists of four parts, which is the introduction, the implication of related law to the problems, the authorities' body involved, and conclusion and recommendation. First, let us look into the river pollution in Sungai Ichat. Sungai Ichat is located at Cameron Highlands, Pahang, Malaysia. It is a tributary that flows into Sungai Terla. About 70% of Cameron Highland population depends heavily on the Kuala Terla water treatment plant for the source of raw water supply. The main socio-economic that took place along with the Sungai Terla and Sungai Ichat is agricultural activities. On 25th February 2019, it has been reported by the Department of the Environment that the contamination of Sungai Ichar are due to the illegal land exploitation and illegal agricultural activities. The contamination of Sungai Ichar is not only caused by the oxygenating materials dump, but also by the organic waste, in this case agricultural waste, and excessive use of pesticides, which considered as toxic and hazardous material, which is believed came from these illegal farming activities. Furthermore, uncontrollable use of pesticides and uh, the use of prohibited pesticides are under the supervision of the Pesticides Act 1974 and trespassing the government property is under the supervision of the National Land Code 1965. Next, we look into the river pollution in Sungai Kim Kim. Sungai Kim Kim is located at Pasir Gudang, Johor. On March 7, 2019, with an increasing number of health problem cases such as headache, dizziness, vomiting spells, nausea, and breath difficulties. Especially among school children, Malaysia had suddenly received a shocking news on the river pollution of Sungai Kim Kim, which is identified due to the dumping of toxic chemical waste by industrial firm. It affects more than 2,000 people and 111 schools are ordered to be closed. Investigation carried out by the local authorities found that about 20 to 40 tons of oil waste were illegally dumped in the Sungai Kim Kim. Energy Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change Minister Yu Bin pointed out in the parliament said that the toxic substance found in the river were the same materials that used to recycle tyre. This case is under the supervision of Environment Quality Act 1974, which the persons who find guilt committing this irres irresponsible act will be sentenced to five years prison and a fine up to 500,000 ringgit Malaysia. The contamination of Sungai Kim Kim had left a significant impact towards the community and economy. As for the community, the community had suffered from health problem which came from the toxic gas emission which later cost them financially to pay for the hospital bills and to buy medicines. And as for the economy, the state government had to compensate the suffered community. And the state government also had to bear the cost of hiring contractors 
to clean the 1.5 kilometers of Sungai Kim Kim, which is about 6.4 million ringgit Malaysia. With that, I'll pass my presentation to the next presenter. Assalamualaikum and hi, my name is Muhammad Nazri bin Muhammad Usaini. I am a student of IB or International Business from BA 2463P and today I would like to explain about relevant laws implication toward the problems of Sungai Aichat case. Uh, this is one of the reported cases in Malaysia in 2019. So without further ado, let's go. I will explain about relevant law implication to the problems. First, we have Poison Act 1952. In this case, the legal activities have involved poison which is overuse of pesticide. It can be explained through Poison Regulations 1952 in Regulation Number no. 5, Container about storing poison. The containers of pesticides were poorly maintained and washed in accordance to the prescribed method that caused the problem. But there is a manner that we can follow by storing the regulation in a safer way by following uh, the methods. Second is Farmers Organization Act 1973. Action like withdrawal and expulsion or even suspension and dissolution of member units and not to forget payments can be done if the person found guilt based on the act. In this case, the farmers were illegal from the beginning but the regulations can be applied if the farmers from legal organization commit unlawful acts. Third, we have Pesticide Act 1974. The content of the act covers the management of all pesticides and other chemicals used in agriculture. It can be explained to the control in Peninsular Malaysia of substances that are both poisons and pesticides based on the act. As long as the substances are well managed, there is no action to be taken. But the crime here, the farmers is overusing the pesticide that create an unnatural condition to the water sources that lead uh, to the hard living of the community. I also include other law like National Lane Code 1965. In this case, the perpetrators have trespassed an area which is prohibited to enter. The farmers then is under supervision of the National Land Code 1965. To this end, the code introduces in the form of a national code is a uniform system within the following states. That's all from me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Shafiq Mizakaria. I am from BAS 2475A. I want to explain about relevant law implication to the problem which is river pollution in Sungai Kim Kim Pasir Kurang Johor. Alright, first section is section 34B1A. Provide that no person shall place, deposit or dispose except at prescribed premise only and is scheduled waste on land or into Malaysian water. Based on the case, N. Maridas was accused of disposing of scheduled waste namely oil, oil waste or oil sludge to Sungai Kim Kim without approval of the Director General of en Environmental Quality. The three directors also been accused under section 34B1A. Alright, next section is section 34BB4. Uh, it shows that uh, any person who contravenes this section shall be guilty of an offence and shall be liable to a fine not exceeding 500,000 ringgit or to imprisonment for a period not, not exceeding 5 years or to both. This refers to the case which N. Maridas involved in disposing tyre in Sungai Kim Kim. Alright, for the third section is section 34B3. This section provides any act of receiving or sending or transit of any scheduled waste with an approval obtained through falsification, misrepresentation or fraud or which does not conform in a material way with the relevant document in such form as may be prescribed shall be an offence. For example, uh, N. Maridas was excused for disposing of scheduled waste namely oil waste or oil slash to Sungem Kim Kim. Alright, for the last section which is Section 31 of Environment Quality Regulation Schedule Waste 2005. This section provides every waste generator shall within 30 days from the date of generation of schedule waste notify the Director General of the new of the new categories and quantities of schedule waste which are generated. Based on the case, the three directors were also slapped with 15 charges each under Rule 31 of the Environmental Quality Regulation Schedule Waste 2005 and Environmental Quality Regulation Clean Air 2040. They were accused for of hailing to conduct 
a quality monitoring and failing to notify the authorities about the production of scheduled waste. Alright, I think that's all for me. That's what I that's what I just explained about the relevant law implication. Alright, I think um, thank you for uh, give your attention to me. Alright, assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum to everyone who is watching this video presentation. I am Afiq Asmullah bin Abidin. I'm going to, to talk about some of the authorities and non-government organizations that have helped in solving the water pollution case of Sungai Achat Bed in Cameron Highlands. Pahang are a few agencies involved, which is firstly Pahang Department of Environment under the Ministry of Environment and Water. Uh, the department arrested one of the illegal farmer because the illegal farmer was trying to bribe an officer who was conducting the case of Sungai Achat. The defender, Tan Meng Li, was found guilty by the decision court. The defender was prepared three years of prison and a fine of total RM 100,000 ringgit because the defender was violating the Section 152 National Land Act 1956 Illegal Land Exploration. The other authorities involved are both Pengurusan Air Pahang Berhad that was once known as Jabatan Bekalan Air Pahang and also Jabatan Alam Sekitar Cameron Highlands. Both organizations combined their strength in solving this case which led to Sungai Achat managed to be managed to be treated earlier than expected. Jabatan Bekalan Air Pahang and Jabatan Alam Sekitar Cameron Highlands fast actions in handling the complaints regarding the case rewards them with the ability to disclose the case, the case faster compared to the other water pollution case in Malaysia. Meanwhile, a represent, representative of Jabatan Alam Sekitar Cameron Highlands acts as one of the representatives who gives updates and reports regarding the case. The final authorities and non-government organization involved are Jabatan Perhutanan Negeri Pahang, Majlis Belia Negeri Pahang, and also Sultan Ahmad Shah Environmental Trust. All those organizations involved in recovering the polluted Sungai Ichat. For the Jabatan Perhutanan Negeri Pahang, they planted a total of 13,615 types of saplings from various types of plants in to recover the 16 hectare of Sungai Ichat area. Meanwhile, for Majlis Belia Negeri Pahang and also Sultan Ahmad Shah Environmental Trust, organizations conducted three activities known as Komunikasi, Pendidikan dan Kesedaran Awam, CEPA in short, in which it brings a result of the 12.25 hectares of Sungai Ichat area had been treated with the planting of another 11,200 saplings also from the various species. And that's all for me. Moving on to the next present. Thank you for So this. during the worst water contamination in Kim Kim River, many officials are working together to address the devastating crisis. Swift action by the parties involving the medical team, the fire department, the police, the state government, and all parties who have worked hard to ensure the safety and health of the affected communities. Department of Education and Pasir Gudang District Education Office have identified few support strategies by closing down schools surrounding Pasir Gudang, then student teacher and staff that had been traumatized by the episode will be given counseling to help them to calm down. Moreover, all students who were hospitalized received 25 ringgit each as a compensation from Takaful, Malaysia. So, who caused the pollution of Kim Kim River? The, the Department of Environment, uh, DOE, had identified who behind it all. The investigation was carried out for nine days and had arrested 11 people, including owner of chemical plant in Kulai and the destroyed West plant, including one of his employees. One suspect later released on bond despite proving to unrelated to the situation. Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Climate Change, key goal against contamination of the Kinkim River was to purify the distribution of poisonous gases and water pollution. The cleaning process was carried out for 13 days and then supervised for 15 days to ensure the condition was very safe. With the help of employing con contractors and chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear team, um, Malaysia Ministry of Health established a medical team to investigate 6,000 6, victims of pollution. 
health team composed of officials from the Institute of for Medical Research and Johor Health Department. State Health Department also warned um, the public not to spread misleading reports. Pasir Gudang Municipal Council provide a medical pass for people that affected by the pollution at the Pasir Gudang Municipal Council Indoor Stadium. Hi, my name is Shafiq Iman and now I will tell you about the existing and alternative solution for the Sungai Kim Kim. Okay, the first existing solution is 160 people that consists of 34 students and 120 fishermen from Pasir Gudang who were affected by the pollution have filed a lawsuit to the offenders who have been charged in court for disposing chemical into river. This action can give a lesson for people to avoid and also from making the same mistakes. Next, Malaysian government um, quickly make a move by sending the hazmat thing to cleaning the river before it spread more to the other places. One of the way is by put an oil bomb into the river in order to stop the oily substance from floating further down the river. Besides that, Malaysian Armed Force deploy its chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear team to assist the hazmat team. Next. I will tell about the alternative solution. Okay, the first solution is we can strengthen our current law. For example, uh, the person who commit the crimes will pay for the cost to cleaning the river. Um, in this case, the cost for clean up the Sungai Kim Kim is almost six point four million, as mentioned by our ex minister. That's a lot of money. Besides that. We also can use the current technology that we have, which is Internet of Things. For example, we put a sensor and drone across the river. This method can help to uh, quickly detect the crime committers. After that, we also can use garbage enzyme. Garbage enzyme is obtained by fermenting fruit and vegetable waste. This method has been widely used in China and Thailand and the the matter is developed by Thailand organic researcher who named uh, Rosukon Pon Panyong Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh so my name is Muhammad Aris Amani bin Mavlan and I will present about the existing solution at the Sungai Achat water pollution and the first solution the first step that the government do to overcome this problem is by closing the usage of the river which is the main water resources for Kuala water treatment plant and next government enforce the cleaning service and make sure that there is no usage of water from the river and the enforcement the enforcement was made through Ops Leftari 1 and Ops Leftari 2 after the enforcement activities, the land is handed to Pahang Forestry Department to be planted with saplings of many species such as gu, minyak and grow. And the reason why to plant with sapling is to fence up the land and to keep it clean and at the same time will restore the quality of the water and for the alternate solution that can be done by the government is firstly by tighten the security of the land or tighten the security of the empty land so there is no one that can easily enter the land and do the illegal land clearing activities and number two government should restricting the law of the illegal land clearing activities such as longer the jail time or increase the fine pay so that people will be afraid to do problems and last but not least I think invite government should give proper education to everyone about the environment about environment so that everyone will have the awareness and responsibility to take care of their of the living things surround around them
Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Radam Iman. Bin Muhammad Nur. So right now we will move on to the recommendation and conclusion for the recommendation. The best recommendation for the pollution in Sungai Kim Kim, Pasir Gudang Johor and Sungai Icat, Kemerah Highland Pahang is through the public education about the importance of a clean and healthy environment. This can be practiced and done with campaign about environmental awareness through the help of the education system in school and organization so that public or the student can be reminded about the importance of the environment in our daily life and the effects and impact if this environment and pollution issues were not being taken seriously. The government of Malaysia must also do an effort to create awareness about the pollution effect and environment issues so that the issues like pollution in Sungai Kim Kim, Pasir Gudang Johor and Sungai Ichat, Cameron Highland Pahang can be stopped in the future. For example, the effort done by the Department of Environment by creating RAS, Rakan Alam Sekita, for the public to join is a very great way to create an environmental awareness for the society. So for the conclusion, public educations about pollution issues and Environmental Quality Act 1974 has been a very important instrument in reducing river pollution to certain extent, even though there are still uh, big challenges that need to be overcome to achieve a good and healthy water quality and its management. The nations will continue to use the water from its river for many years to come and it is possible for the authorities and us to reduce uh, these pollutant rivers and improve uh, river water quality on a sustainable basis. We can live with dead rivers or fish that are too poisonous to eat or then we can cooperate to save the earth to keep the environment clean and healthy as well as the plants, animals and individuals who rely upon it also remain healthy. Working together, we can make pollutions less of a problem and the world a better place. That's all from us. Thank you.